When we think of astronomy, many of us have recent contributors such as Albert Einstein or Newton in mind, or perhaps the moon landing and the ISS. The history of astronomy, however, is far older than many think, and it stretches back, really, to the dawn of mankind. It was common among ancient tribes to have a respectable knowledge of astronomy, but with the first civilizations, this was cemented in writing and recording and passed down to future generations. Now, if you're going through world history, chances are that you've heard about the civilizations of Mesopotamia. We're going to be discussing their contributions to history today on the History of Astronomy by Stello. You've likely heard the phrase land between the rivers. Well, this refers to a region of land in the Middle East between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers, settled from ancient times for its notable fertility. For reference, this land, called Mesopotamia, is located in what is southern Iraq today. As a result of its prime conditions, Mesopotamia became the home for the first permanent agricultural settlements, including the Sumerian, Assyrian, and Babylonian kingdoms. These civilizations, notably the Babylonians, pioneered record-keeping and writing, and were the first to tabulate astronomical records and mathematical innovations. Even though much of these records were lost during the Bronze Age collapse, their ideas still live on and continue to benefit us. So, cuneiform was the first writing system in ancient Mesopotamia, and was primarily a logographic language, meaning that it used specific symbols to represent objects, much like Japanese or Mandarin today. Back then, there wasn't any paper or parchment, so impressions were wedged into clay tablets instead. Cuneiform is, in fact, thought to be one of, if not the, first forms of written language anywhere in the world, and so its importance cannot really be understated, because it allowed for the permanent recording of knowledge that formerly had to be passed down orally between generations. Scribes could now record detailed mathematical and scientific findings, and the Babylonians especially took advantage of it, making many hundreds and thousands of star catalogs during their time. Because of this meticulous record-keeping, and therefore cuneiform, much of our knowledge about ancient Mesopotamian astronomy is made possible. The Mesopotamians didn't just make observations, though. They also used mathematics to predict astronomical phenomena, whether talking about the phases of the moon, or the appearance of meteors or solar eclipses. One of our greatest sources for this is actually a large series of Babylonian clay tablets called the Enuma Anu Enlil, which tabulated Babylonian observations and records of astronomical events over many hundreds of years. Of these, the Venus tablet of Amisaduka is the oldest and arguably most significant. It records, very precisely, the rising times of Venus over a long period of 21 years. Other phenomena relating to the planets were actually also found in this tablet, making it the very first to actually have written anything down of the sort. Another mathematical benefit of the Babylonians in particular was a sexagesimal system, or base 60 system, which made it very easy to record very large, and very small numbers. Cosmology was also an important part of the Mesopotamian view of astronomy. One of the most interesting treatises within this was the idea of the spatial whole, which essentially imagined the Earth and the heavens as one whole rather than separate parts. They believed that this celestial sphere, as they called it, was actually of round shape, making several references to the circumference and totality of it, rather impressive considering the tools available to them. They also viewed the cosmos, which was thought to sort of overcast both the heavens and the earth, as revolving around itself with equivalence to the whole. So their idea was actually a whole lot different from geocentrism that prevailed later on, something which was mainly championed by Aristotle and his followers. Astronomy was woven into the culture of the Mesopotamians as well. They had many cultural and religious practices, as we have discussed before, associated with it. Calendar systems resulted from the study of the skies and patterns within it, and, due to the clerical association with chronicling the sky, advanced mathematics was rather abundant. The Babylonians later used a lunar calendar that even had a 13th month in leap years that served to recalibrate the calendar so that it didn't get too offset with the growing season, because you have to remember that most of these ancient civilizations were very agrarian in nature. Interestingly, however, most of the developments in this field were championed by priests, who made new mathematical concepts in order to better track the celestial sphere. Among these was Nabu Rimani, who, in a very impressive manner, calculated very accurate tables that listed the orbital speeds of the sun and the moon. On the subject of calculations, the Babylonians and the Mesopotamians were second to none. They used a form of geometry in order to predict Jupiter's motion over time, 
all in an abstract space that was very easy to conduct calculations in. A lot of these later advances in mathematics were pioneered by the Chaldeans, who were prescribes that focused on the study of astronomy, basically the predecessors of astronomers. They discovered many, many things, from the fact that the sun's motion was not uniform to an exact list of solar and Saros cycles. Among them was Seleucus of New Babylon, who supported and even somewhat proved the heliocentric model many years before Copernicus using a rudimentary form of trigonometric computation. As you can see by now, the advances of ancient Mesopotamia were truly breathtaking, especially considering the limited technology available to Mesopotamian scholars. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting.